Okay, good morning. So we continue our discussion on factorization. This is the last part we want to talk about factorization. And then uh, we carry on. So it contains two parts to today's lesson. One part is optional that I will teach it the last part. Uh, but one thing that I want you to know, there are not that many exercises in the book here, but this was in Math 2C as well. So I want to teach you this. Uh, so we learn how to factorize uh, polynomials if you have something in common, if you have a factor which is common to all the terms simultaneously. And we also learned how to use a squaring rule and conjugate rule to factorize things, yes? And we also gave, I gave you also some exercises combining these tricks. But there is also something more that I want you to learn. This is also, s there are simple exercises. But let me just uh, start with example because there is nothing that I can teach. I just give you some examples so that you get familiar with the idea how to solve the problems. Okay. Uh, we want to factorize the following expressions. For example, I want to factorize AB plus a plus b plus 1. Yes, I want to factorize this. So you see that, first of all, there is nothing in common in all the terms. For example, between these two, a is in common. Between these two, b is in common. But there is, not, there is no factor which is common to all the terms simultaneously. So that first trick that we learned will not work here. Secondly, I hope you understand, there is no way that I can factorize this using a squaring rule or there is no way that I can use conjugate rule to factorize this. Okay? So the trick of these kinds of problems is grouping and then factoring out. And then by exercise, by doing some exercises, you, your skill will actually improve. But if the problem is hard, even I myself have trouble to solve that. I mean, that is not something that I can teach you. By practice, you can just hope that impro to improve your skills. But just let me tell you what is going on. For example, I decide to group these two together and these two together. Let us see why this is useful. So you have to be patient to see why this grouping works and then try to teach yourself, okay, for the next exercise, how can I understand what to do myself? So here, for example, between these two, I consider that these are the only ones and A is in common, so you know how to pull A out. So what happens? From the first one, only B is left. From the second one, only 1 is left. Because if you multiply this back, it becomes AB plus A, and this is the case. But I decided to put B and 1 together, so let me put them B plus 1. I would say that this is a successful grouping. Why? Because after partially factorizing them, you immediately see that a new common factor emerges. So this is a good grouping, yes? And when it emerges, now you can assume that this is your factor and pull this factor out. So what happens? It becomes B plus 1. From this, A is left. If, if you d so by the way, when I pull out, I divide. So I divided this in my head by this factor that I pulled out. So A is left. And I divide this in my head by this factor, which is coincidentally the same. So there is only one left. And now you see that this is the in factorized form. Why? Because it is written in the form of a product. You can double check that. For example, you let us expand this. I multiply b by a. I multiply b by 1. I multiply 1 by a. I multiply 1 by 1. And hopefully you agree with me that is identical. Not identical, but equal to this one, yes? So this is the way that I want you to learn. So I give you more exercises so that you can improve your skills. But I want you to make sure that you understand. Do you understand what's going on? Okay. So let me give you another example. So what we can do here for this one. xy plus 3x plus 2y plus 6. So here, for example, again, let us just review things. If I ask you to factorize this, you will see that the first trick that we learned is not working because there is nothing in common for all the terms simultaneously. 
And of course, you hopefully you realize there is no way to use the squaring rule for factorizing this, and there is no way that I can use conjugate rule to factorize this. Yes? So the only thing that might come to mind at the level of your lesson is just this grouping and factoring things out. Okay? So, for example, let us just try to see if I group these two and group these two, this is going to work or not. By the way, there is no reason that I have to group them in two by two cases. I assume you might, there are some examples that you have to group three of them in one and one left alone. Okay, I will tell you. So there is no specific rule. That is only by practicing more. Okay, but let us try to see if this grouping is successful grouping at the end or not. Okay, between these two, I can factor an x out. What is left from here? Y. What is left from here? Plus 3. Between these two, I can factor a 2 out. So this becomes 2 and then y plus 3. Now here, I realize that my grouping was a good one. Why is that? Because after partially, uh, after, uh, partially factoring them out, then you see that a new factor which is common emerges. So I would consider this a good grouping, yes? So it will work. So this means that now I can pull y plus 3 out, and then from here x is left, from there 2 is left. Okay, for example, let me change my grouping. For example, you might think that, okay, can I take this one with that one? This is not always possible, but let us try to check. I will rewrite the same question again, but let us see if I can change the grouping and getting the same more or less results. So, for example, you might think that, okay, because y is in common in both of them, I would prefer to take these two first. And then there is a 3 in common between them, I prefer to take these two first these two together. So then between these two, y is in common, so I can factor a y out. From the first one, x is left. From the second one, 2 is left. Okay, but then I take a 3 out from these two, and then from the first one, uh, x is left. From the second one, 2 is left. So this is also successful, yes? Because after partially factoring them, I realize there is a new factor which is in common and I can pull it out. So this becomes x plus 2 and then y plus 3. So it doesn't matter. For this, kind, for this problem, you have two different ways of grouping. Both of them are equivalently successful. Yes? Is that clear? Okay, so let me write some more here for you and wait for you to see how you solve the problem. Okay, so I will write some of these exercises on the board and wait for you. The idea of all of them are these kind of groupings, yes? So, uh, let me write number one here. And you can immediately start, you don't need to wait for me.
the idea uh, so some of them have the exactly the same idea but some of them have a little bit more subtle ideas i think that you can find it yourself okay Uh, I think I made a mistake here. Let me see because this doesn't fit. This is plus. Let me double check everything again. Yes, it was a plus. I mistakenly wrote that. But let me double check the other ones. Yeah, it seems to be right now. Sorry. Okay, how is it going? Okay, since I want to finalize this factorization lesson today, and we have to finish 10 minutes earlier because uh, there is a physics test going on. So let me uh, start uh, explaining them for you. Hopefully you can understand. Okay. Um, so here, I hope that you see what is a good grouping here. Did you come up with this idea? What is the grouping? Yes. The first two terms together, yes? That's correct. That's my impression as well. So I will take these two together. And of course, there is nothing I can do for these two. I put them in one group. So between these two, I can pull a to the 3 out. And what is left, it is a uh, minus 2. And then here I have plus a minus 2. Yes? Yes? That also works. That also works. So here I pull a minus 2 out. And then what is left is a to the power of 3 plus 1. So this is correct. If you group it the other way around, that is also correct. Uh, for example, you told me you group this one with that one. So you take this with that. And you took these two together, yes? If you do that, between these two, you can pull out just one a out. From here, a to the 3, and from here, 1 is left. And between these two, there is a minus 2 here, minus 2 here, so you take a minus 2 out. Then a to the power of 3 plus 1 is left. But that is also successful, because now you see that this common factor emerges, and you can pull this out, yes? Yes, but uh, to be honest, I didn't realize that this will happen. This factorization is not complete yet. Uh, that was, uh, do you remember I told you that I want to teach you an optional one, but let us now teach you right now, okay? We talked about two identities before and we didn't use them. So do you remember? Uh, if I have A plus B, a binomial multiplied by an properly engineered trinomial so that the first squared is here if you have plus you have minus a b and this is b squared yes do you remember this is always in the formula sheet but usually there are no exercises regarding these identities in the book so this is a to the 3 plus b to the 3 and we have something like this if a plus b is a minus b but here it is a squared plus a b plus b squared and this becomes a to the 3 minus b to the 3. So from left to right, we talked about this a little bit before, uh, a few 
sessions before and then from right to left is factorization so you remember f uh, the conjugate identity is always useful for these kinds of expressions if i have the difference of two complete squares i can factorize it in this form but if i have the sum of two squares I told you that this is not factorizable in the realm of a real number. So if you see x squared plus y squared, just leave it like that. You cannot factorize. But in the case, if I have third powers, both of them are factorizable. If I have a to the 3 plus b to the 3, I use this identity to factorize it. If I have a to the 3 minus b to the 3, I have this to factorize it. Yes? Okay, I want you to know about this. This is not really beyond the level of your math knowledge. And it is always in the formula sheet, these two formulas. Okay, so why this is not complete? So it doesn't matter if you uh, factorize it using this grouping or that grouping. But I want you to see that a to the 3 plus 1 can be factorized more. Why? Because a to the power of 3 plus 1 can be viewed as a to the 3 plus 1 to the 3. Yes, because 1 to the 3 is just 1. And then what do you have? You have to sum of, you have the uh, sum of third, uh, sorry, the sum of cubes of uh, two complete cubes. Yes, so you can use this formula to factorize it more. So this a is playing the role of that a, but 1 is playing the role of b. So this becomes a plus 1, and then this 1 to power 2, the product between them with the opposite sign, and then this 1 to power 2. So a to the power of 3 plus 1 can also be factorized a little bit more. So if you stop here, that is not complete. Okay? But so that we continue. We continue, for example, let me just go for the first line. I copy and paste a minus 2, but instead of a to the 3 plus 1, according to what I have written here, I would write a plus 1, a squared minus a plus 1, then I will uh, stop here. Yes, so that is the complete uh, factorization of this expression. Yes? That was a little bit unfortunate that the first example actually was a little bit more complicated than I was guessing, yes. Uh, to be honest, because I always see these formulas in the formula sheet, so in principle you should be able to use them. But then, I don't know about the national exam. Might be they don't design such a questions. But anyway, if I am a little bit careless and give you this, probably I expect you to factorize until the end, okay? But usually I will solve my questions before I giving them to you. Okay, anyway, understandable? So my goal was to understand at least the grouping. And then we realized that two groupings are working for this case. Okay, so let me go to the next one. So for the number 2, so what should I write? So let me just write it everything in front of us. a squared x squared minus x squared minus 4a squared plus 4. I want to factorize this. So which grouping do you prefer here? Yeah, because I would say that let us take these two together and these two together. Between these two, I can simply factor x squared out. So there is a squared minus 1 left. Okay, what do you suggest here? What should I factor out? Yeah, I should take minus 4. Because if I decide to take 4 out, then what is left from here is minus a squared. What is left from here is positive 1. But this is not successful because minus a squared plus 1 is not the same factor. It differs by a minus sign. Whenever this happens, it motivates you to pull minus 4 out. So I take minus 4 out. What happens? It becomes a squared minus 1. Now you see this is a successful grouping. So then I can take a squared minus 1 out. So what is left? x squared minus 4. 
if you have any questions, please interrupt me. But is it complete? This is really at the level of your lesson. This is a conjugate rule. That is also a conjugate rule. So you have to continue. So a squared minus 1 can be written as a minus 1, a plus 1. This is a half 2, okay? And then x squared minus 4 is x minus 2, x plus 2. So this is the full factorized form of this expression. Understandable? Okay, so we go number three. So number three, let me just write it again, b squared y plus a squared y minus b squared minus a squared. Yeah, this was probably simpler than the previous one. I hope the grouping is clear to you as well. So I take these two together. I take these two together. Between these two, I can take a y out. So this becomes y, and this becomes b squared plus a squared. And then between these two, what do I do? Because I want to do something that a new common factor emerges. So what should I do between minus b squared and minus a squared? Because minus b squared minus a squared is not the same factor. So what should I do? I pull a minus sign out, yes? So I take a minus sign out, it becomes b squared plus a squared. This is a good factor, this is a good grouping now. Because you see b squared plus a squared emerges, so I can pull it out. So this becomes b squared plus a squared. From the first one, y is left. From the second one, one is left. Can I continue further here? No, because this is the sum of two complete squares. I told you that whenever you have the sum of two complete squares, just leave it. Uh, okay, so let us go to number four. So number four is this. Uh, we have 4x squared plus 2x minus 9y squared minus 3y. So I don't know, do you have any suggestions here? This is a little bit harder than the previous one. Previous ones, yes. So could you succeed to do this? So okay, what should I do? Yes, so it means that you take this one with that one, even though there is nothing in common, okay? And then you take these two. Let us see why this works. So let me put them in a pair of brackets to see them better. So I take this one and just write it next to this guy. This becomes minus 9y squared, and then I write these two next to each other. So this becomes plus 2x minus 3y. So you might think that there is this is not successful because there is nothing uh, in common now. But then you immediately, as Ali said, this is a conjugate rule, yes? So what happens? So this is, you see, the, the logic of the way that you need to think in this problem number four is a little bit different from the previous ones. The grouping is uh, still working, but the idea of grouping having a common factor immediately is not the case here. So you need to actually see a little bit broader. So now you see that if I factorize this part only using the conjugate rule, it becomes 2x minus 3y times 2x plus 3y. And now you realize why this uh, grouping was indeed a good one. Because now you see this is the common factor that I need. So I pull it out. So this becomes 2x minus 3y from the whole first term, this is pulled out, so this is left, and what is left from here? One, so it's plus one. And that is the factorization of this uh, expression. So that was a good problem, even though it was simple, but the idea was a little bit novel here. Questions? Okay, so number five, that is also a good example, simple but good example. So a squared, minus 2ab plus b squared minus 4. So how do you group these two? Uh, so how do you group these one? This one. Any ideas? Yeah. 
Yes? Exactly. So you realize that this time it is better to take these three together. Because if I write these three together, it becomes something like this. And now you realize that hopefully this is the squaring rule. So you can write it as a minus b to the power of 2. And then you have minus 4, which you can write 2 to the power of 2. And then hopefully your eyes is trained for this pattern. So, uh, so then you immediately realize this is the conjugate pattern. So this becomes the square root of the first one, which is a minus b minus the square root of the second one multiplied by the square root of the first one plus the square root of the second one. Yes? So you remember we have this, yes? If I have something in the box squared minus circle squared, you can write box minus the circle, box plus the circle, yes? So I give the role of the box to this guy, I give the role of the circle to this guy, and then I write this. Yes? So number six. What about number 6, by the way? That's also a good exercise. a squared minus b squared plus 2bc minus c squared. Yes? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Between these three, I take a minus sign out first, and the idea becomes the same as before. I pull a minus sign out, it becomes b squared minus 2bc plus c squared. And then if I ask you what do you see now, you immediately realize the squaring pattern. So this becomes a squared minus b minus c squared. Be careful, in this form it was not a complete square. Yes, it was not squaring rule, because for a squaring rule I have to have positive signs for my complete squares. But here I have negative signs. So I realize that I have to take this negative sign out. And now, is it finished? No, that's the same rule. But this time you give the role of the box to this A, you give the role of the circle to B minus C. And then what you write, you write A minus B minus C and A plus B minus C. But it is always better to remove unnecessary things in mathematics. So here we really don't need these pair of brackets, but we multiply this minus sign in. So this becomes A minus B, but plus C. Here, because it's a positive sign, I just simply remove the pair of brackets. So that is also factorization of this number 6. Okay, what about number seven? Do you see any idea? Hopefully now you have experience. Might be you couldn't solve the previous ones, but in principle you should be able to solve number seven now. So what is the idea of number seven? So let me write it down here. Number seven, x squared minus four y squared plus four y minus one. Anyone, this one? That's the same idea, exactly. Yes, exactly. So what should I do first? Between these three, I group them and factor a negative sign out. So that's the only thing. You need to train your eyes to catch these patterns, yes? So x squared, between these three, I pull a minus sign out. This is 4y squared minus 4y but plus 1. So if you have already enough exercise on this you immediately realize this is a squaring rule. Yes? So what happens? This becomes x squared minus 2y minus 1 to power 2. We can double check. The first one squared is this one. 2 times the first one times the second one is the middle term. And the second one squared is this one. So that's correct. But then immediately you realize the conjugate pattern now. So this becomes the square root of this minus the square root of that. Don't forget to put this pair of brackets or do it in your head properly. So this minus sign is not only for the first one, but also for the second one. And then you write x plus 2y minus 1. And then you have to remove unnecessary pairs of brackets here.
So I remove this one, so this becomes x minus 2y plus 1, and then I have x plus 2y minus 1. So that's the final answer to this problem. Any questions? Okay. Uh, I want to uh, practice a little bit more about quadratic uh, trinomials. Uh, if you remember, I told you how to factorize them systematically. So it doesn't matter how big the numbers are in a quadratic trinomial. Using ABC formula, you can always factorize them. Yes? But sometimes you can do them faster if uh, you can do some guesswork and you are familiar with that. But this time I want to emphasize on those whose leading term is not, who the coefficient of the leading term is not one other than one. For example, uh, let me just review. If I have ax squared plus bx plus c, if I ask you to factorize this, one possibility that always work independent of your ability to guess numbers is to use this formula that you write a which is this a multiplied by x minus x1 multiplied by x minus x2 if i ask you what is x1 and x2 you will tell me that x1 and x2 are the roots or the zeros of this polynomial so to factorize a polynomial, this recipe tells you that first find a x1 and x2 using ABC or PQ formula and then put them in this formula. Yes? Uh, okay, but for example, if I want to factorize x squared plus 5x plus 6, even though I can definitely use this, but there is a better way to do it, faster way to do it, you are familiar with it. You might ask, I need two numbers whose sum is 5 and the product is 6. And then immediately, you, this is not hard to guess. So these are 2 and 3. Yes? Uh, but I haven't talked about this guessing work if this coefficient is not 1. So today I want to practice a little bit there. For example, I can give you two this question, 2x squared plus 3x plus 1, okay? I want to factorize this. Let me use the recipe once, okay? So if you cannot guess what you can do, you can use this formula. So the first thing that you do is to go and put this equal to 0 yourself. So the solution uh, starts from here. There is no equal to 0 in the problem itself. This is if you want to use this algorithm, you yourself put it equal to zero and solve it. Okay, if I want to solve it, then x becomes equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four times a times that, which is minus eight, divided by two times this number, which is four. But then it becomes minus three. This is one divided by four. I get two roots. One of them, it doesn't matter which one I call x1, the other one I call x2. Minus 3 minus 1 is minus 4 divided by 4 minus 1. Minus 3 plus 1 is minus 2 divided by 4 is minus a half. As soon as I have my uh, roots, I use this formula. So this means that 2x squared plus 3x plus 1 is equal to your number a, in this case is 2, and then what do you do? You write 2x minus x1, which becomes minus minus 1. And then x minus x2 minus minus a half. So this means that this becomes 2x plus 1. And then you have x plus 1 half. But you shouldn't uh, stop here. Because when I s factorized, last time I told you that even though this is a factorization, but the domain of factorization is rational numbers here because 1 over 2 is a fraction. And I told you that if I just ask you to factorize, by default I mean that you have to factorize on the set of whole numbers, integers. So this means that even though everything technically is right, but because of this 1 half is not, it's not acceptable because 1 half is not an integer. So that's a very simple remedy for that. What do you do? You take this 2 and multiply it there. 
You can also multiply it here, but it does not help you because it's still one over half will be left. So what I do, I keep x plus 1 and I decide to multiply 2 in the second pair of brackets, so it becomes 2x plus 1. So you see that we were able to factorize this without any guesswork. This method here does not work. There is another one, uh, you need to understand it a little bit differently. Okay, so here, uh, this three because of these two, this kind of guesswork is not valid. Of course, this is not so hard. You can immediately, if you can guess, just do it. Okay, you can imagine I have polynomials. I want to multiply this to generate this. But one idea that you can use this a little bit faster is this. For example, here I have two x squared plus three x plus one. This middle one, I break it into two parts, but appropriately. This appropriately might be hard. I want to give you a rule for that. So what I do, I write 2x squared. Instead of 3x, I will write 2x plus x. Yes, I can write this in infinitely many ways. I break it as the sum of two terms, but there are infinitely many possibilities. For example, I can write 4x and minus x. If I add them, it becomes 3x. I can write, I can write minus 7x plus 10x. Why did I choose this one? You will see why. Okay. So, but assume that you can understand to break the middle term into these two. Okay. Then this will become the previous lesson because now you can take these two in one group and these two in the same group. So between these two, you factor a 2x out. From here, x is left. From there, is 1 is left. And then I have x plus 1 here, yes? So then you see that I can take x plus 1 out. Then I have 2x plus 1, yes? So if you can understand that how should I break the middle term, and then you are fast enough in the previous lesson, you can combine these two and factorize you. I think this factorization, especially if you train yourself, is faster than solving the equation using ABC formula and things like that. But uh, still, it, t it, it is highly dependent on your guessability, yes? Because I told you that there are infinitely many possibilities that I can break the middle term, but there is only one of them which is working, and that is this kind of work, okay? So the trick here is that to which terms, so take this thing and multiply it by here, it becomes 2, yes, and then this number is 3. Ask yourself, I need two numbers whose product is 2 and the sum is 3, but the interpretation is different, okay? So what are those numbers? First, tell me, t tell me two numbers whose sum is this number, which is exactly in the middle, and the product is the product of these two numbers. What are those numbers? One and two. Yes? So this tells you break three to one and two. Is that clear? So if you want to understand how should I break it up, of course that is also depending on your guesswork. This is why I'm saying that if you really don't want to do any guesswork at all, you have to follow this longer recipe. But sometimes there are some shortcuts. So I told you that. This is the trick. You need to ask yourself, I need two numbers whose sum is this, this number, but the product is the product of these two numbers. As soon as you find those numbers, then you break the middle term into those terms, yes? So for example, if I give you 3x squared uh, plus 5x uh, minus 8 equals to 0. Oh, sorry, not, not equal to 0. You want to factorize this. One way, of course, is to use this longer recipe. But can you do some guesswork here? Let us see if it can work it or not. So if, if my recipe works, I am asking you to give me two numbers whose sum is 5 
and the product is minus 24 because the product of these two is minus 24 positive 8 minus 3 yes yeah it is not that hard so I need two numbers whose sum is 5 and the product is the product of these two numbers which is minus 24 now I am asking you can you give me those numbers what are those numbers which uh, positive 8 and negative 3 so this tells you that break the middle term to the sum of these two terms so it, it is extremely important it was not that easy to guess so I mean that you write 3x squared instead of 5x you write minus 3x plus 8x this is the only one that will work okay and then write minus 8 at the end so you see what I did I broke the middle term to the sum of two terms but which terms and how should I do it it still needs a guesswork but I told you that this is the systematic way of coming to those guesses okay but now you see what it why it works because between these two what can I do I can factor a 3x out from these two and I can factor 1 8 from these two and then this uh, pattern emerges so this becomes m x minus 1 3x plus 8 okay I will give you one more and uh, uh, I will go back to that optional one I think the lesson will be finished so let me just give one more example of this type yeah because this uh, quadratic this quadratic trinomial appears a lot of places in mathematics uh, it's good to know how to factorize this efficiently but I told you that if you don't like these methods then of course the price that you have to pay is sometimes to work a little bit longer but the benefit is of course it doesn't depend at all on your guess abilities yes okay so let me give you another example uh, this example I want to mention uh, 6 let me write this time t t squared uh, 6t squared minus 5t plus 1 I want to solve this using two methods again to summarize everything first the the longer method which always works so what I have to do if I want to use that recipe so I would take this and put it myself equal to zero put uh, put it equal to zero myself yes and then I would say that okay let me solve the problem this means that t is equal to minus b which is 5 plus or minus square root of this number to power 2 which is 25 minus 4 times this times that which is 24 and I divide it by what 2 times this number which is 12 and then it becomes 5 plus or minus this becomes 1 divided by 12 I will get two answers but because the variable name is t let me call them t1 and t2 5 plus 1 6 divided by 12 is 1 half 5 minus 1 4 divided by 12 is a third and what you do you just write the formula so 6 t squared minus 5 t plus 1 is equal to I take this number 6 and I put t here and there minus minus t1 is 1 half t2 is 1 third it's correct but it is not acceptable because by default I am supposed to work on only I with integers so what I have to do this is good because this 6 you can imagine 6 to be 3 times 2 so 3 times 2 times this bracket uh, times this bracket so what I want to do I will take this 3 
and multiply I could multiply it here but this will not solve my problem because this becomes 3t and this becomes 3 halves which is a still a fraction so I decide to multiply this 3 to the last pair of brackets and this 2 here yes so what happens this becomes 2t minus 1 if I multiply 2 here if I multiply 3 there it becomes 3t minus 1 so this means that now the factorization is finished but let me just uh, do it once more using that trick. If you want to factorize this, you have to break the middle term. But what question you ask yourself? You ask yourself, I need two numbers whose sum is this middle number. And the product is the product of these two numbers, 6 times 1, which in this case is 6. Now, can you guess the numbers? Two numbers whose sum is negative 5 but the product is 6. What are those numbers? Minus 2 and minus 3. So this means that you have to break the middle one to minus 2 and minus 3. So this becomes 6t squared minus 3t minus 2t plus 1. Yes? Sorry. And then what you are supposed to do, I think the rest of it is clear. You group them like this, for example, and like that. Between these two, I factor a 3t out. This is 2t minus 1. And between these two, I factor a minus sign out. It becomes 2t minus 1. And then you see that 2t minus 1 is in common. I pull it out. Then it becomes 3t minus 1. By the way, you see that this is not uh, actually very lengthy here. But that's up to you which one you want to do. But that's also good to know this method is also working if this number here is not 1. Yes? Okay, uh, just one optional exercise here to practice a little bit about those uh, identities uh, involving cubic uh, powers. So, and then we are done. Only, only I think, two exercises is enough. Uh, for example, what do you think here? Can I factorize this? 64 plus 27x to the power of 3. Do you think this can be factorized? Yes, 64 is also a complete cube, yes? 64 is 4 to the 3. So you need to imagine that this is 4 to the 3. 27x cubed, uh, it can be written as 3x to the 3. So this, first of all, you need to interpret this as the sum of two complete cubes. And then you have that formula that if I have a to the 3 plus b to the 3, you can factorize it as a plus b a squared with the opposite sign in the middle and then b squared. So this is why we can continue. So this becomes 4 plus 3x and then multiplied by the first one squared which is 16. Multiplication of these two with the opposite sign and then finally 9x squared. And by the way, you might assume that this can be factorized even more. But this cannot be factorized more. This is a quadratic. So if I ask you factorize this, by the way, how do you understand that this is not factorizable anymore? If you want to use that trick, it is hard here. You need to guess two numbers whose sum is minus 12 and the product is 9 times 16. Okay? So... How do I know that? Because this is always a danger that can I go further? Because if you could go further and you don't, you lose some points, yes? But my question is that do you think that this can be factorizable? Because this is a trinomial. How do you see that this is not possible to factorize it anymore? So for this case, only the first method will work. Because if you solve this, you will see that the roots are complex. So I mean that if you calculate delta, 
Do you remember what was delta? Is b squared minus 4ac. So b squared is this number to power 2 is 144. But this number times that number times 4 is greater than 144. So if you calculate that, uh, how much is it? 9 times this is just 144. And then you are supposed to multiply it by 4. I even we don't need to bother. It's clearly negative. So when it is negative, it means that this trinomial cannot be con uh, factorized more. Okay, so don't worry. So this cannot be factorized more, so that's a good st stopping point. But that was a relevant question, because that is a trinomial of the second order. How should we know that we cannot continue? We calculate delta if we doubt about it. If the delta turns out to be negative, there are no roots, so we cannot factorize it more. That's the stopping point, yes? So this is not the case that all trinomials can be factorized. Yes, because the trinomials can be factorized that have roots. Otherwise, we cannot factorize them. Okay, any questions? Okay, thank you. So we stop here.